Hi, this is Wendy. Um, I am a missionary with Teen and just want to talk to you today about um, apologetics and worldview. These are some really helpful concepts that have helped me to uh, be able to present the gospel in a more understandable way for the Theravada Buddhist people. Um, apologetics. So a lot of you already know what this means, but some of you don't. Um, apologetics is a defense for one's faith. Um, 1 Peter 3.15 reads, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. So basically, apologetics is a defense for the gospel. And we all believer, we all of us as believers are responsible for being ready to give a defense for the gospel. Um, so some people, the great thinkers of our faith, have made really complex and incredible, amazing, all apologetic defenses for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yet even um, the everyday man, even ordinary people are also, uh, should be ready to be able to give a defense for their faith. So I took apologetics with um, Dr. Warcocker, and it was a wonderful class. I really enjoyed it. Um, I learned a ton and um, learned the history of apologetics and learned some really, um, some really incredible uh, defenses for the gospel. Um, but what I discovered was, is this was not really a usable um, tool, I guess, in the Theravada Buddhist world. Um, Buddhists are not, uh, Eastern people don't think the way we do. We have a long history of um, Greek linear thinking and we think very logically, and um, we believe we can find answers to um, every question. And um, a lot of times, uh, at least here in Thailand, uh, Eastern thinkers don't think like that. They are more cyclical thinkers instead of linear thinkers. And they are able to hold two opposing truths um, at the same time. So taking the class really made me um, aware of uh, that I really needed to be careful of how I approach presenting the gospel to Buddhist people. Um, in Dr. Ward's um, philosophy class, I was introduced to his uh, worldview chart, Christopher Cohn's worldview chart, and that was super helpful as well. Um, and so just being able to understand those fundamental differences in, in thinking um, and then writing papers on it and doing research on it were really helpful things that I were able, that was able to help me um, think about how I present the gospel to Buddhist people. So um, I also want to give, give a definition of worldview. Um, this is from J.R. Miller. <laughs> um, he used to teach at um, SCS as well, the seminary I went to. A worldview is a penultimate, penultimate manifestation of philosophical inquiry, which provides an overarching lens through which one incorporates all metaphysical suppositions about reality determines a paradigm for epistemological inquiry, inquiry and guides the cultural expression for ethical priorities and moral decision making. Well, that would take a long time to kind of figure out what he's trying to say there. Um, so this is an easier definition. Um, a, worldview a worldview encompasses life's most pressing questions, such as what really is? Where did everything come from? What is good? What is evil? What is the meaning of life? And what is the destiny of the human race? These are the questions that make up the bedrock of one's metaphysical belief. So, um, yeah, so it's important when you present the gospel to understand your own worldview and to understand the worldview of the person that you are presenting the gospel to. Um, and um, a lot of times, what apologetic may approach may resonate with us will not resonate with the person we are talking to. But we use that because that's, um, that's what comes naturally to us, that's what speaks to us, that's what's meaningful to us. So, but it's, it's more helpful, I guess our, what I'm trying to say is our gospel presentation will be more effective if we are aware of what is meaningful to, to them. And um, when I studied about the Buddhist worldview, versus the Western worldview. 
I was astounded at the differences between our worldview. I had no idea. Um, well, I had some idea, but <laughs> but it, it amazed me just the differences between the two. So I wanted to just um, review really quickly uh, Christopher Cohn's um, worldview chart because I felt it was a really helpful tool. So um, we're going to look at it a little bit more closely, but I just wanted to take um, a couple minutes and um, kind of go through the basic ideas. So I'm, kinda, I'm just going to write it down here. So it kind of starts with the bedrock metaphysics. And metaphysics answers the question, um, what is, basically. Um, and there's different components in here, and we're going to look at that more carefully. There's ontology, axiology, tele teleology, and uh, so, ontology asks the question, what is? Where does it all come from? Axiology answers the question, what is good and what is evil? And um, teleology asks the question, what is its purpose? And the last one, eschatology, answers the question, where are we going? And so from this bedrock of metaphysics, kind of answering the question, uh, what is, um, is epistemology? And epistemology asks the question, um, what is knowledge? It deals with the theory of knowledge. And then on top is ethics and sociopathy. And ethics asks the question, what is good? And sociopathy asks the question, how do we act? So these are just some helpful ways of looking at worldview, and um, yeah. So I'm gonna switch to the chart and then talk about these a little bit more in depth, so you um, can kind of get a better idea of what, I'm, what this chart is talking about. There are many ideas concerning worldview, and what I am presenting is simply one of them. Christopher, Dr. Christopher Cohn's worldview chart proposes four main components of worldview. So, again, let's just go through e each component briefly, and I will use questions from Vidal to clarify what these worldview components are. So, metaphysics. Um, metaphysics has four components ontology, axiology, uh, teleology, eschatology. So ontology asks the question, what is? Ontology is a model of reality. It has to do with the model of reality as a whole. But Al helps clarify this term. The first question is the question of ontology, or a model of reality as a whole. It can be uh, typified with the question, what is? It encompasses questions like, what is the nature of our world? How is it structured and how does it function? Why is there something rather than nothing? Why is the world the way it is and not different? What kind of global explanatory principles can we put forward? How did the universe originate? Where did it all come from? The second one, axiology. What is good and what is evil? Axiology has to do with the theory of values. Vidal writes, axiology has to do with the question, how do we evaluate global reality? What should we strive for? 
what is good and what is evil? What is the meaning of life? Axiology traditionally deals with those questions, including morality, ethics, and aesthetics. The components should give us a direction, a purpose, a set of goals to guide our action. Another explanation is from J.R. Miller, and he writes, Axiology defines what is intrinsically or extrinsically good and what is intrinsically or extrinsically bad. So, does human life have intrinsic and or extrinsic value? And going on to uh, teleology, what is its purpose? Teleology has to do with purpose. This purpose of life for all human beings guides one's actions, direction, and goals. And then finally, eschatology, where are we going? This has to do with prediction or model of the future. On eschatology, Vidal writes, it focuses on the future. Where are we going to? What will be the fate of life in the universe? It is about futurology. So going up from metaphysics, we'll go to epistemology. And the question is, what is knowledge? It is about the theory of knowledge. Where is truth and knowledge found? How does one acquire knowledge? And then going up from their ethics, what is good? And then sociopraxy, how should we act? Praxeology has to do with the theory of actions. On this, Vidal writes, the fifth question is about the theory of action or praxology. How should we act? What are the general principles according to which we should organize our actions? Sociopraxy is the practical outworking of one's worldview in society, work, and family, in politics, and essentially all interactions with people on every level.